Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. So, you've been watching my videos for a few years, maybe quite a few years, and you've seen me and other folks build some speakers and subwoofers, and thought to yourself, I wonder if I could do that. It looks like fun, but I'm not sure if I'm ready for all of that just yet. Or maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you've seen enough. You've lurked on some speaker building forms for a while, you've done some research, and you're ready to pick out a nice looking woofer and tweeter from Parts Express and just jump in with both feet into speaker design. Well, I wanna offer you a little advice, no matter which side of that coin you may find yourself on. So here's the question. If you wanna get into speaker building, should you start with a kit or should you try and design a speaker on your own? The long answer is, it depends. And keep watching to see why I say that. But the short answer is, if you're brand new to the speaker building hobby, then yes, I would seriously consider starting with a kit. Why do I say that? Well, I'm going to give you five compelling reasons why in a second, but the main overarching reason is that designing a speaker that sounds good is complicated. It's been simplified a lot over the years with programs like Jeff Bagby's Passive Crossover Designer and cool tools like the Dayton Audio Test System or DATS and the OmniMic from Parts Express but it's not easy to design a good sounding speaker if you're new to the hobby. There are a lot of unknowns that you won't even be aware of as a beginner until you've designed a few speakers. Listen, there's a big difference between building or reproducing a speaker and actually designing one, okay? Don't let all those short YouTube videos fool you. The learning curve is steep. So let's list some of the advantages of choosing a kit for your first speaker build. Reason number one, you're pretty much guaranteed success. All the difficult design work is already done. The enclosure is optimized, the crossover is tweaked, and you know it will sound good. You just need to follow relatively simple directions on how to glue up the enclosure and then assemble the crossover. And you've got a pretty good guarantee that your speaker system is gonna sound great for years to come. And you'll feel a lot of satisfaction after having completed them because you were the one that built them. The thing with starting a new hobby is you wanna have success right off the bat. So you'll be encouraged to keep going. If you try and design your own speaker and spend several hundred dollars and invest a few weeks or months of your time to build a speaker system from scratch, and when you finally get it all done, it just sounds <laughs> lousy, then you'll probably get discouraged and you might just give up altogether. The way to avoid that is by starting with a good kit. Many accomplished speaker designers have started out that way, and there's no shame in doing that at all. So reason number one is guaranteed success. The second reason for using a kit as your first speaker build is this. If you run into a problem, you'll have some support to get it figured out. When you buy a kit from Parts Express, for example, you've got a support structure from Parts Express as well as access to their Tech Talk forum, which is one of the best support communities for the speaker building hobby that exists in the world. Even with good instructions, it's not uncommon for there to be some minor mistakes and misunderstandings with the crossover, for example, if you're not used to working with resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And following a schematic for some folks isn't super easy. Mistakes happen, even for us experienced speaker builders. So it's nice to know that you have a safety net if something goes wrong. Reason number three, if you build a kit, you will get exposure to many of the skills needed to build a speaker from scratch. So you can decide if it's something you want to do or not. For instance, some of you will really enjoy assembling the cabinet, gluing the pieces together, taking the clamps off the cabinet the next day, sanding it smooth, finishing it, and you'll think to yourself, man, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. After that, you may decide that you'd like to get a few tools together and try to build your own enclosures from scratch. And that's fantastic. Cabinet construction is also my favorite part of speaker building. So that experience of assembling the cabinet will inform you on whether or not you like that aspect of speaker building. Others of you will say, you know, I really didn't love the cabinet construction part, but I really liked putting the crossover together. Figuring out which pieces need to go where, laying out the crossover bits, finding an arrangement that works good, fastening them to the board and getting them all soldered up, that really appealed to me. I've seen some folks really turn this part of speaker building into an art form, and that's great. That is fun, and it's a different aspect of speaker building than enclosure construction. You may find that you really love crossover work. The thing that is so cool about building a kit is that it gives you some exposure to almost all of the aspects of speaker construction. It gives you hands-on speaker building experience so you can get a feel for which aspects that you're likely to enjoy. 
The fourth reason that starting with a kit can be a good idea is that purchasing a kit is usually cheaper than purchasing components separately. Parts Express gives you a decent little discount if you buy their package deal. Their flat pack enclosures include only the wood that you need to build the enclosures. And you won't have to go to the big box store to purchase a sheet of wood that you're only going to partially use. More money in your pocket, less waste. And one of the most important reasons to go with a nice kit for your first build is that when you're done, you'll have a good sounding speaker that you can use as a reference to gauge all your future speaker builds against if you decide to continue with the hobby. Question, what is a good speaker supposed to sound like? If you build a good quality kit, you will now have a reference point to know how a good sounding speaker should be reproducing the music that you love. So we've talked about the pros of starting with a kit. Are there any cons? I've thought about this a lot, for years actually, and I don't actually think there are any cons to using a speaker kit as your first speaker build, at least not for beginners, and I'll explain. One of the things that a kit will not teach you is the process of choosing a bass driver and designing an appropriate enclosure for it. That's true. But you can still do that with almost all of the kits that Parts Express sells. Now here's how. You find the spec sheet for the bass driver that comes with the kit on the Parts Express website that you choose, enter those specs into a box program, I recommend WinISD, it's free, and enter the interior dimensions of the enclosure and vent if there is one. If you do that, you can see for yourself what the predicted bass response will be for that exact cabinet size. Then you can mess with it, go smaller and larger. See what that does to the excursion of the driver, how it affects the low end roll off. Adjust the vent size and length. And see what using a smaller vent does to the vent velocity. You can get a little bit of an education on what various changes will do to the frequency response and other aspects of an enclosure just from playing around with it. Another thing that building a kit doesn't teach you is the process of taking measurements and simulating a crossover. All of that will have been done for you already. Truthfully, that process of speaker design is by far the hardest part for most people. It was for me. It is for me. It took me years to get a working understanding of how to take valid measurements and what I needed to do to manipulate the files to be able to do valid simulations. That's probably the biggest barrier to becoming a successful speaker designer. That learning curve is really steep. And without some big time help from a few really nice guys, and one in particular, I would still probably be struggling to understand a lot of this stuff. But again, you can still purchase a kit, put the cabinet together, and leave the crossover pieces outside the cabinet. So you can tweak them, see what the various changes have on the overall sound and frequency response. Experienced speaker designers essentially do this all the time. It's called tweaking. We take measurements and then we design a crossover, but after we temporarily put it together with alligator clips, we almost always make at least some minor changes to some of the values to adjust the sound to what we prefer or to get rid of little issues. Graphs and simulations will get you close, but you need to listen to what you've designed to see if it's really sounding like you want. Okay, even after I've said all that, there are probably still some of you who will say, sorry Zarbo, I don't want to do a kit. That sounds like the easy way out. I really want to create my own custom speaker from my own idea and do my own design. Okay, I get that. Well, in that case, my suggestion is to join the Parts Express Tech Talk forum or another good DIY audio forum and start a post explaining what it is exactly that you want to do. List the drivers that you've chosen, the cabinet size, and if it's a sealed or vetted enclosure, and then see what kind of guidance you might get. There are a lot of really smart folks out there who may be able to help you. And you may find that someone has already designed a speaker for the combination of drivers that you've chosen. Every so often someone posts a question on the Tech Talk forum and they say something like this. I ordered this woofer and this tweeter and I bought one of those pre-made two-way crossovers and I put it all together and hooked it up and it really sounds bad. Or I bought a woofer A and tweeter B and I want to make a speaker with them but I don't know how to start. Some of these posts do ultimately end up in success weeks or usually months later, but it's never easy. And there are almost always issues and problems along the way that have to get figured out. That's just how it is. That's its own kind of fun and it's always a learning experience. So if you just have to do your own speaker from scratch, do it. We all learn differently, but understand that you're gonna need a lot of help and you're gonna need to purchase some test equipment to do it right. Unless you just wanna rely on everyone else's guidance and experience. And then at that point, is it really your speaker design if someone else did all the crossover work? You very well may wish that you had just started off with a kit to make the learning curve a little easier.
to make the time between the initial design and the functioning finished product shorter and less painful, and maybe less expensive. If you're nervous about laying out and soldering a crossover together, they have kits that come with professional PC boards ready to plug the parts into and solder. If you like to glue a cabinet together but don't have the tools or desire to cut out the boards, they have lots of CNC kits with all precision pre-cut panels that fit together perfectly. If you're good at making things, if you're a craftsman and would like to build your own cabinets but still want the ease and security of having a pre-designed kit, then Parts Express has several kits without the flat back boards, so you can have the enjoyment of building your own cabinet. And if you don't want to even touch a bottle of glue, Parts Express even sells a kit where the cabinets are already assembled and finished. There's literally something for every skill level and comfort zone. Yep, there's something for everyone. 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 You know, uh, I had an idea. Rather than just assume what people think about wanting to cut things and not cut things in kits, maybe I'd just ask an expert in not being a speaker building expert what they thought about the idea of building a speaker kit. And my wife, who's been my wife for 19 years plus. Yes. She's not an expert in building speakers, even though she's kind of married to one. So um, I've asked you several times I mean, over the years, like, would you ever like to build a speaker? And you kind of look like maybe you might have said yes, but then you always say no. So why is that? Why do you always say no? Well, um, I, I enjoy watching you work and build speakers, but um, as for me, I just, the truth is, I'm just afraid I'm going to cut, chop one of my fingers off. Uh, I'm just afraid of the tools, of the machinery. Um, I just don't know if I can handle it and make good cuts. Uh, yeah. yeah. They are loud and it's kind of scary. I wear ear protection, as you can see in the videos, but without that, those things sound like a demonic monster trying to kill you, basically. I understand that. So, um, well, there's a company called Parts Express. I know you're familiar with that. Uh, of course, it's a household name. We get their packages <laughs> almost as much as we get Amazon packages, which is to say nearly every day. But um, they sell a lot of kits and a various assortment, but some of the kits have what they call flat packs, and you know what a flat pack is, right? Yeah, I think I've heard you talk about it. Yeah, you so mentioned what is a flat it. Pack? Tell well, people. basically, I don't have to make cuts. I won't have to cut the, the circular, the enclosements for drivers. Um, it'll come just prepared, uh, ready to glue. Right. So they, they, um, the boards are cut to the right size. They have like dados in them and stuff. Most of them only go together one way. And all you got to do is put glue and clamps or tape. Do you think you can handle that? Uh, I think I can handle that. I think, I'll, I'll be there yeah. to help you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you're by my side. Yeah, I think I could do that. So this, this is an idea. Um, maybe we'll see if we can find a kit from Parts Express and you can put it together. And I'll just sort of provide you a little bit of guidance along the way. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds good. That way yeah. you won't have to get anywhere near a table saw. And I won't have to increase our medical insurance or life insurance <laughs> in any way. Um, yeah. Well, that sounds nice. So let's hop over to the computer and peruse the Parts Express website and see if we can find a kit that my wife, Eileen, might like to or might be able to put together. Let's go. Let's go. That should be fun. Probably a bit challenging, too. My wife is not at all mechanically inclined, but I think I can say with a high degree of confidence that if she can put a kit together, then literally anyone can. And there are not an awful lot of girls out there building speakers, so this will be kind of groundbreaking. So, should your first speaker build be a kit or not? Well, for 95% of you, I would say start with some type of kit if you're new to the hobby. You'll have a great sounding speaker in the end, and you will have a much better idea of what the speaker building hobby is all about. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And I have links in the description below to lots of speaker kits that Parts Express sells so you can check out all the options available to you. Check out this video if you want to see the whole process of building a speaker and crossover from scratch. That might get your juices flowing. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for Eileen's kit build coming up. And remember, you never know what you can do till you try. Bye now. Everything about this one, the Samba MT, that one's a good one. Um, and this one too, this one's a good one too. This is the Aviatrix. I've heard a lot of good things about that. Okay. That one uses the reference series tweeters and then it uses 
um, two of the uh, Indy series, I think it's a five and a quarter inch woofer. It's the same version, uh, the larger version of the woofer that's in Chris Farmer's Neo Nanos. Oh, okay. That four inch one. And that one's, that's great. I still have those upstairs yeah. in my uh, hobby room and they still sound good. Right. So this one uses a, a larger woofer and two of them and a reference series tweeter. So that's a 